So today I wanted to look at the topic of uh, building out evergreen notes. There is a lot, lot of different tools that we can use to build out a note system. So some people use Evernote, some people use OneNote. Uh, I personally prefer Markdown just because it's very flexible and I can do a lot of stuff in Markdown that makes it look very good and the, just the content is structured and I can refer to it easily later. So even with Markdown, there's different approaches that I can take, right? Some people use Jekyll, some people use Hugo as a static side generator. Actually, I'm a big fan of Hugo. I run my blog with that, so I decided to stick with that for notes as well. So in this video, I just wanted to show how I'm doing this for my own purposes, and you can easily adapt it, and I would actually be curious to know what your approach is. So. I'm looking at a Docker file here that I put together for easy deployment of my notes infrastructure. So all it does, it's an Ubuntu image. It installs Node and then Hugo, which is a static side generator written in Go. So it just unpackages it, uh, deploys it locally inside the container. And then inside that uh, container, I mount a content folder that contains my markdown notes. And then it also mounts the config file or config.toml that defines what my notes should look like, what's all the metadata, and then install some dependencies for a theme that I'm using, which is Doxy that's made by some awesome folks at uh, Google. So if you go through the actual documentation for Doxy, the theme itself, it uses the template that uh, the it actually represents. So it makes it very easy to explore and understand what they're doing. And if you're curious about you know a specific structure of the page or what exactly it's about, uh, you can just leverage this theme and just look at what they're doing, click on edit this page and see, well, once you log into GitHub, uh, what exactly uh, you know the metadata and all the markdown uh, markup uh, represents. But I really like this. It's very clean, very easy to use. And that's why I just decided to adapt this for my own personal needs. It's not hosted anywhere. It's all running locally. It's on my hard drive. And um, so what I have here is an example of how this would work. So I have uh, this test markdown file that actually I don't need this H1. And I can say, you know, this is for a video and I will save this note. Uh, it's again, regular markdown file. There's nothing special about it. If you've ever edited, you know, readme's on GitHub, this is exactly, works exactly in the same way. Now my config.toml, I just used one that literally came with a theme. So if you're exploring the GitHub repository for uh, Doxy, and in this case, no, I'm not gonna go to GitHub, well, maybe I will. I'll open the GitHub page and I'll go to user guide and you can look at their config.toml and kind of see what are the fields and config settings available. And you can just go through the Hugo theme itself to see what the possibilities of Hugo are because not everything is captured in this file, but you can just, just as easily reuse this. And uh, so what I did here is I just have some configuration settings that are very, very basic, not a lot of uh, you know custom work. I just took exactly what the template provided. They have great search powered by lunar.js, which allows me to do offline uh, content discovery. If I ever you know want to refer to some notes that I wrote, or maybe I put some notes about a book, I can easily get back to those uh, later with lunar.js because it creates this index uh, inside my local repository. So. With that being said, if I will uh, look in my terminal and I'll show you exactly how this works. So I'll actually interrupt the existing session, but I already have a Docker image that's been created locally based on my uh, definition in a Docker file that I just showed earlier here. So to build this, just run Docker build and then period in the folder where the uh, Docker file is located and that's kind of it. But once you build this, you can run this image and I'm gonna show you how. So I run, with uh, Docker run interactive, then map a port. So local port 80 is mapped to port 1900 inside the container. So that's defined in the Docker file. So if you look behind this terminal prompt, you'll notice that this is something that I'm actually binding uh, localhost 1313. So here from, uh, because it's Hugo, uh, Hugo's port, it maps with 1313 by default. I'm putting it to 1900 and then mapping to 80 on a local machine. You could, of course, make the configuration different. You can change the Docker file to expose a different port if that fits better for what you're trying to do. For me, I just like to have this custom port config uh, for uh, some conflict resolution purposes because I run a bunch of other tools locally. But that being said, 
I'm also mounting two things here. So one, I'm mounting the folder with the notes as the content folder. So I have Hugo Tools site content. This is the folder inside the container that contains all the markdown notes. And then I have my notes tutorial notes folder that you can see here that is on my local hard drive that has all the markdown files that we just looked in Sublime right here, right? So this is the structure of the folder. It has notes, meetings, test.md, and then the config file. And I also separately mount the config file that I take from the experiments, notes, tutorials, config.toml, and I mount inside Hugo Tools, site config.toml inside the container. And then there's a hash of the container image itself that I'm using. So once I run this, it'll actually spin up the uh, container. So it's, it's running if I go to my Docker panel. But here, I'm just gonna go to localhost uh, and just remove this. And well, actually, we don't need to go to doc.go, but we'll just go to localhost uh, and this. And you'll notice that this is the knowledge base. Right now, it doesn't have a landing page, so it's a little hard to navigate, but we can refer to it from the folder structure. So if I go to say, uh, in my case, let me refer back to Sublime, it was uh, meetings uh, and then uh, testmd. So this should technically be meetings test.md because my content folder is the notes. Well, actually I forgot the notes part and I will add it here. Oh, it's actually not it. So notes, meetings, uh, oh, because I don't need the MD, right. Uh, and I don't need the notes either. And there we go, finally. Uh, so it goes to meetings uh, and tests because notes is my content folder, so I don't need to specify that. And I just go meetings and then uh, test and that renders the page. Now, the drawback if you run this on Windows is that updates to the files. So for example, here, if I add uh, blah, I will actually not see the update on this page because it's not communicated back inside the container. If you're running this on Linux or Mac OS, this should work by default and it should work really well. So here, notice that in my terminal, Hugo did not actually rebuild the content. And by the way, you don't need any custom build scripts or anything like that. So I'll just stop it and then rerun it again refresh the page and you notice that blah made it into the page so it's a little bit of a side effect of running this on windows but if you're writing markdown files and then just want to see how it renders later on that's an easy way to do that now in terms of folder structure you might ask well, okay what's the best way to actually structure these notes and to me what I do is I structure them by purpose. So I'm not gonna show you the exact notes that I'm using locally, but if you want to, uh, the way I do this is by what I intend to do with the notes. So for example, here I have notes for meetings, I can have notes for you know friends' birthdays, I can have notes for my project ideation. Uh, there are several approaches you can take, but essentially to make it discoverable so that I can look at the markdown files, not just through this web interface, but if I just pop the folder open in my text editor of choice, I can easily infer where exactly I need to look. So this is generally my strategy for evergreen notes. So for things that are not in flux, for things that I need to just jot down, iterate, run images on, I will just use OneNote because it has great inking support. But for things that are more permanent, I will use Doxy with Hugo inside a container. So if you like this, you can just go to the repository, download the Docker file and deploy it locally. And that's kind of it.